this is Amber Flynn, and my speech is over drinking and driving. And the purpose is to have people understand how dangerous drinking and driving truly is and the social pressure involved, and there's also a lot of decisions that are being made. So the central idea is how dangerous drinking and driving really can be. And every day, almost 30 people in the United States die in motor vehicle crashes that involve an alcohol-impaired driver. This amounts to one death every 51 minutes. And that's on the CDC.gov. And I'm sure everyone knows someone that's been hurt or even killed in a drinking with an intoxicated driver incident or drinking and driving accident, or maybe you were even in one yourself. But I've done a lot of research about this topic, but because in school I'd always try and make this one of my topics for a project because of how much I care about this single topic. And the main points are going to be drinking. The first one is going to be drinking while driving can affect way more than just you. The second one is going to be drinking while driving is very illegal, so why would you even want to do it in the first place? And then the third topic will be Indirect, indirect social pressure involved with drinking. Do you really know how dangerous drinking and driving is? Drinking and driving has killed way too many people. Even though people have been trying for plenty of years to do something about it. Nobody has really found any way to help it or stop it because everyone kind of makes their own decisions. So. Intoxicated driving numbers have to go down. Where it is at now is just way too high and it's unacceptable. In 2013, 10,700 people died in drunk driving crashes. So that is one every 51 minutes. And 290,000 people were injured in drunk driving crashes. And that was on the MADD.org website. Driving under the influence, a DUI, also known as, and also known as drinking while intoxicated, DWI, or drunk driving or impaired driving is the crime of driving a motor vehicle while impaired by alcohol or drugs, including those prescribed by physicians. With alcohol, a drunk driver's level of intoxication is typically determined by a measurement of blood alcohol content or a BAC test. And that's on the ncadd.org. So how can you actually fix this situation? You have to do your part. When you see someone drinking at a party, get together, or something along those lines, you have to do your part in helping them. So you have to ignore that direct and indirect social pressure. This is what I believe is the main reason people drink the way that they do, which leads to drinking and driving. So if you can just reason with people and don't make them feel this way, then I think that less accidents with drinking involved, with drinking being involved would happen. People have to learn how to say no which these days is not easy for people to do. So when someone tells you no, you just have to take that as an answer. This plan will only, this plan will only help with, or if the person learns to say no and the party accepts it as an answer, which also comes with a level of respect. And I know personally how hard it is to tell people no, because I can hardly do it. <laughs> Most of the times I usually can't, but you just have to learn how to say no and make sure that they perceive that as your answer. So people can be pretty terrible sometimes. Even if, that does, even if the person does say no, then the other person could not accept that. And then they would eventually end up giving in and drinking anyhow to please the other person or for the social standards. People just have to learn how to say no. Do you know the major consequences of drinking and driving? This plan has been adopted all over by everyone because it is pretty basic. Pretty much everyone has thought of it, but you just have to put that plan into action. It is common knowledge that drinking and driving is a crime with serious penalties. It is also common knowledge that it is dangerous to get behind the wheel of a vehicle if you are under the influence of alcohol and or drugs. That's on drunk driving prevention. The consequences of drinking and driving is absolutely endless. You could get a DWI, arrested, or possibly die. You could kill people because of your mistake. If you go to this website, you can pledge to not drink and drive. 
And the pledge on this website is, I pledge to always drive sober, and by taking this pledge, I also agree to the following sober driver pre pledge agenda items. And that's on drinkinganddriving.com. There's like 2.7 million people that have already done this pledge. And a lot of schools also make you do this pledge too, around like prom and homecoming and all that, where there's going to be a lot of alcohol involved. So let's sum up some of the things we went over about drinking and driving. Drinking while driving has killed too many people. We have to work on this. It could be anyone. You don't have to be the one drinking to be injured or killed in a drunk driving accident. So if you just reason with them and try and get them not to drink and drive, that would cut down so much more instead of just letting them go because you don't think that they drink that much. If people would learn how to say no and what the word no means, then there would be a lot less direct and indirect social pressure involved. If someone you love dearly passed away in a car accident because of them drinking and not being able to drive or because of a drunk driver your loved one passed away, then you have a reason to be fighting about this problem.